Welcome to the HPC Best Practices webinar series. This series is brought to you by the Ideas Productivity Project, which is part of the Exascale Computing Project, ECP for short, of the United States, the United States Depart Department of Energy. I'm Osni Marcus from Lawrence Berkeley Lab, and will be the host for today's webinar, uh, Infrastructure for High Fidelity Testing in HPC Facilities. The webinar will be presented by Ryan Prott, Ryan is the group leader for the Software Services Development Group in the National Center for Computational Science at uh, Oak Ridge National Laboratory. He's also the software deployment lead for the ECP, uh, Access Skill Computing Project. Ryan works with operational staff across labs to provide software integration, continuous integration support to ECP software technology teams. We have issued more than 140 tickets for today's webinars. All attendees have been muted upon entry. We'll never know how many people are going to show up. Um, we'll receive questions. Uh, we'll get receive questions through the Zoom chat and also Google Doc, whose address uh, I'll paste the address in the chat momentarily. We have asked Ryan to add breaks during his presentation so he can respond to questions that come in. I'll stop my sharing, Ryan. And please, you go from there. Oh, I'm muted. Cool. Um, can you see my screen properly? Yes. All right. Thank you. Yeah. So, as uh, thanks, Ozzy. Um, yeah. So, my name is Ryan Prout. Um, I'm at the Oak Ridge National Lab. Um, yeah, today, uh, I'm, I'm gonna, you know, I want to, I want to kind of, uh, enter, you know, propose a concept, uh, more than anything, um, and something that I've, that I, I, I personally think is, is kind of missing in this, uh, in some of the, uh, the workflows we're, we're working towards for, um, uh, sustainable software, uh, connect systems and things like that. And so, uh, but yeah, as as Osni said, um, my background has kind of been feeding this um, this desire to to talk about it more, especially within ECP, um, but also with my position at Oak Ridge, uh, kind of focusing on software services uh, for the facility. Um, and so, so we'll talk about what uh you know we'll give a in the beginning here. I'm going to give kind of like a high level view of of a, a few things at, at play here. So most of the discussion will be focused on kind of the Oscar facility, so the advanced scientific typic computing research facilities, uh, the user facilities there um, for computing. Uh, they will also look at the ECP stuff, so the exascale computing stuff. And I'll try and tie all that together um, a little bit and uh, and also look at some other other things, uh, you know, maybe tie a little bit to, to the integrated research infrastructure initiative and also the software sustainability um, initiatives coming about um, next, so post ECP. All right, um, and, and ultimately, um, you know, my my history uh, feeds a lot of this. So I've, I'm not a uh, you know scientific application developer myself. It's mostly about the the software, the operational software around the facility to facilitate uh, workflows and services and things like that. And uh, and that's beginning to to feed more into kind of these DevOps um, ideas in the scientific space uh, around these facilities. Um, and so I kind of want to highlight a few things uh, in, in that space, mostly during this talk. So some gaps that, that are present um, and maybe some ideas to, to help, help remedy that. Uh, yeah, so the goals here, uh, build momentum. Um, this is maybe the main one is build momentum and creating common CI services across. So CI being continuous integration in this case, um, services across uh, the advanced scientific computing research facilities. Um, and then kind of drawing links in IRI, um, and then uh, you know boosting the experience. Uh, talk about boosting the experience for scientific software testing, integration, and deployment at these facilities. Um, and then we'll review kind of how we've been approaching that within the ECP space, um, and then how uh, how we can see high fidelity environments helping uh, with with these processes and workflows of, of testing and integrating. Uh, software into these unique uh, and advanced environments. Um, and then hopefully we can generate discussion, um, you know, or keep the discussion going um, and contribute to some of these uh, 
these other ideas uh, happening, uh, especially with the research software and engineering efforts and uh, software sustainability and stuff as I had already mentioned. All right, so we'll define a few high level things. So just what are the Oscar facilities? Not everyone may not know, um, but they're high performance computing and network facilities. Um, uh, the, uh, you know, there's Oak Ridge Leadership Computing Facility where Frontier is. There's the Energy Sciences Network, uh, which is actually the network kind of data plane that ties all these together. Um, excuse me, and there's, a nation, there's NERSC, uh, National Sciences, Inter, uh, Sciences Supercomputing Center um, where Perlmutter is hosted. And then Argonne Leadership Computing Facility where Aurora is being built. Um, and these are the, the exascale systems of the future. Um, and then they all have, uh, you know, projects uh, planned for the future as well. So, uh, but these, these systems get, you know, more and more complicated. Um, the software environments that, that have to be applied to these systems is getting more and more complicated. And the, so the ability to provide like a cohesive, um, you know, software deployment and integration strategy across these uh, is of high interest, uh, especially for the future. And uh, the Exascale Computing Project has been, has been looking at um, that, that issue in particular, um, but we need to carry forward that momentum post ECP. And so the Exascale Computing Project, uh, there's, there's three, this little background, there's, uh, there's three main areas. So you have application development, software technology, and hardware integration, and they kind of stack on top of each other in that way. So uh, where I've been focusing is in the hardware and integration space, specifically in the software deployment uh, at facilities. And so you know, facilitating the, the software deployment to each of those systems at different labs. Um, and so we have operational staff at each lab working with um, software technology folks, application development folks to bring, to bring software to the system. And, uh, and, and, and I guess another important thing to mention about ECP uh, is that it's, a very, it's been a very long running project. And so uh, formed in 2016, um, it's, it's been here to accelerate the research, development, acquisition, and deployment of projects. And so I think that's a, an important thing to recognize about how ECP was set up with this long runway, and it could put emphasis on, um, on, on things more than just kind of the, the research output, but the, the kind of the operational, I guess I'll like say operational research, kind of emphasizing that with, with research software engineers and the, and the processes that tie these systems, these facilities together and allow, make deployment and integration easier. Um, that's not always the case, but I, I think it's going to become more important for the future. And then the, the other high level thing I wanted to define a little bit was this integrated research infrastructure. So these are, this is something kind of uh, next in line, so to speak, uh, after ECP, um, a, a kind of grand vision of tying, you know, tying these, uh, these unique systems together and the software that's going to drive them and you know, having these high level workflows, uh, IRI workflows on top of facilities. And so how we make all that happen. And, uh, you know, in, in my opinion, this, this uh, diagram on the bottom right is something I, I put together as, uh, you know, in my opinion, it's about providing systems to workflows um, and doing so through APIs and, and things like that. Um, but I, you know, not, not just, we should look at it from the perspective of not just uh, achieving work, but also how we, you know, how we allow, uh, you know, software developers and, and vendors even, how, to, how do we allow them to, uh, to access and test their software, you know, against the systems more easily, um, integrating that, these DevOps workflows uh, more tightly with, with, with the tools they use outside of the facility. So the, the common interfaces and services layer is, is gonna be important. And then uh, what is research software engineering? Uh, it's, I guess this concept has been, I think it was formed maybe a decade ago now, is, if, if I recall, um, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I, I wanted to highlight these pillars uh, and, the, and the importance of, you know, what they're, what they're putting together here and, and um, you know, for the longevity of science output and, you know, not just emphasizing papers and, and things like that, but, you know, how we, you know, reproducible science and the software that drives the science and how important all of that is. Um, it's an important field. Um, and I also want to highlight how, uh, you know, continuous integration as a practice and DevOps uh, on top of that are really important and, and vital to the software development pillar. Um, you know, automating and recreating work, uh, 
uh, uh, software and testing it um, and uh, verifying its correctness and, and things like that are are absolutely necessary. Um, and then also the Exascale Computing Project is a, uh, a, a superb example of embracing these things uh, for the long for within its uh, project time frame. Um, so emphasizing these uh, software development community training policy. Um, for instance, I mean this talk that we're on right now was put together by ECP, so uh, where that they they at least contribute to the to the idea stuff. So um, and the last thing there's a there's a link here um, for the software sustainability initiatives, but I also I'll have it linked on the on the back end of my slides too in a in a resources slide uh, uh, page. Um, but all all of those are. Are looking at these pillars as well. Um, sustainability is is uh, is a, an important idea, um, and it's definitely baked into this kind of research software engineering uh, model. So just wanted to highlight that. I guess uh, are there any high level questions about these high level definitions or anything? I'll pause for a minute um, before we kind of dive into um, more of the continuous integration aspects of things, but. Uh, none, Brian, please go on. Okay, cool. Uh, so defining continuous integration and continuous deployment. Um, continuous integration, uh, I think, you know, most folks are probably uh, aware of these practices, um, but it's ultimately about automating the integration of code changes for multiple contributors into a single software project. Uh, so it's just boosting collaboration um, and feedback time and the ability to test and integrate changes of software. Um, and then you have that kind of backed by infrastructure um, to uh, to test within. So uh, if you look at uh, you know these you know GitHub and GitLab, they're they're platforms as a service these days. Uh, so you have your code repository. You define um, kind of the 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 rules and the pipelines you want for when code changes come in. And then on the back end, you have infrastructure that. Uh, that you use to actually run those tests and those changes against. And then you have this continual feedback loop around build failures and test failures. Um, and then ultimately, you know, after you, uh, after the CI aspect, you have the continuous deployment aspect, uh, which is building on top of the continuous integration uh, to automate the deployment of an application into the production environment. Um, I won't be talking about continuous deployment so much here, uh, but it is certainly something that can, um, be built from uh, later, uh, but I think you know continuous integration is kind of the core key component at, up up front, um, and then continuous deployment can be built on top of that afterwards. But all of those things come together into this DevOps, these DevOps ideas, um, and so I want to talk about trying to apply and making this easier in the HPC environment context, uh, not so much the enterprise context. I think there's there's a there's a there's a good amount of difference in the requirements. Um, and the needs in both of those uh, scenarios. So to highlight some of the challenges of adopting CI for HPC applications, uh, you know, when you when you use uh, the cloud-based kind of platform as a service uh, technologies, GitLab and GitHub, what you're provided by them in the cloud um, to do your testing is is a general environment. Um, you might be able to replicate the, the target environment in some cases on their back end, but in a lot of cases, you're not going to be able to do that. Um, and so the, the um, yeah, so it's, it's nearly impossible to kind of, uh, you know, if your ultimate target is, say, Frontier or Perlmutter or Aurora, uh, those environments are very complex and unique, um, and, you know, the hardware and the software. And so being able to you know, the tests you run in the cloud, uh, especially if they're performance related, um, you're not going to really going to be able to achieve that or kind of confirm uh, your performance um, in, the, in these general cloud based environments. Um, so we need a way to kind of tie in, you know, this. So the, 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 the concept here is, you know, how do we tie in these systems or their environments into uh, fully into the, the developer's workflow? Um, at the moment, um, it's pretty decoupled um, and, and not integrated. Uh, often, you know, you have to become a user at the facility. Um, you have to, you know, go directly to the machine, kind of pull your code base down, build it, maybe work with the staff, um, you know, run your tests. And, you know, if there's any changes, you push them up um, and then, you know, run your pipeline in the cloud and, and, and see how it integrates. But it's uh, it's not, the main, the main point is, is it's not, Kind of tied in directly with this uh, uh, this 
CI workflow. So Ryan, there is a question here that I think is timely. Can you clarify what you mean when you say DevOps? Because um, apparently the term is uh, used to mean many different things in different situations. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, taking development into operations. So it, I, I, so DevOps, I guess, is the shorthand. Um, but these, uh, you know, CI and CD are kind of some core components of the DevOps. Uh, uh, framework or mindset or tool belt. Um, and so it's it's really about automating um, processes around software development, um, but that can also be applied to infrastructure. It can be applied to pretty much anything these days because we're driving everything with software. But, um, you know, it's, yeah, it's, uh, you know, taking development ideas and kind of automating development into into the operation space uh, through you know through things like continuous integration and continuous deployment does that help yeah okay so there's another question but i think we can take that later okay. please go ahead okay so what do we mean by high fidelity testing infrastructure um so the this is the the concept uh that i'm, I'm kind of shooting for and i kind of uh, in my mind is a gap uh, in this space. And so uh, as stated before, it's kind of it's currently difficult for research software engineers to automatically test, integrate, and deploy software um, into remotely managed computing facilities. And so in the Oscar case, you know, these are all these are remotely managed and provided uh, really big, robust systems. Um, but it's a there's a global user base for these for these systems. Just, but all the software, a lot of the software is open source and out in the in the uh, in the public um, in the public space. Uh, and there's you know contributors from all over the world. And so you know integrating uh, you know those kind of public repos directly, you know the CI workflows behind those public repos directly into the system is uh, is difficult um, due to security reasons. Um, and also kind of resource uh, constraints too. So, you know, we can't trigger a CI job for every change that happens directly on a production system. That's that's really, the production system's really there for, uh, you know, scientific campaigns and, uh, and the, the time that you get on those machines is, is precious. Um, and so a lot of the times you don't wanna use those for testing or integration and, and things like that. Uh, so the cycles are, are precious, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, but if facilities provided these high fidelity environments that were independent of the production system, uh, then we're then we can start to look at it like this, where we have these robust CI services, and that high fidelity environment is uh, maybe more plugged into the to the CI workflow, um, and we can do these fully automated kind of CI workflows. Uh, uh, more tied to the to the upstream code base, um, and then you and then you deploy you know to the production environment. Um, and the the details of that are there's a lot of details that have to work in, in that space as well. Um, but we won't we won't go in, into that. Um, but I do want to emphasize the uh, what what we mean by high fidelity testing and and how it could be useful um, if we had environments like this that were separate from the production environment and maybe provided in a more open space. Uh, to developers who are who are trying to target um, uh, these systems. So here's a high level view of what a DevOps workflow might look like for these scientific applications. Uh, so you have these global global community of developers. They have their central public repositories. They have their general public uh, uh, platform as a service backends for CI in those general environments. Um, but then you could also then we can see this continuing integration loop against this high fidelity testing environment, um, and then this continuous deployment over to the production environment. Uh, and so, you know, the specific yeah, like I said, the specifics of the continuous deployment uh, could take shape in different ways. Um, you know, software is provided on these systems and uh, in complex manners. Um, but a common method for for both of these uh, ideas across all the systems would would certainly be useful. Um, so if you know if each if each site or each lab was interested in providing a high fidelity testing environment um, in the same way up to these uh, you know these developers uh, you know we could we could uh, you know provide a cohesive and more fluid kind of CI service across them. And this is just a high level view, kind of outlining 
how we could tie that high fidelity testing environment into uh, into their into their uh, code bases. So yeah, why can't we do this today? Uh, so triggering automated workflows from external systems is a, not a widely solved solution, um, particularly in Oscar. So they they are, uh, as mentioned earlier, these systems are kind of in a walled garden, so to speak. So they, uh, I mean, they, people can access them, but integrating uh, workflows from the outside uh, is still being, um, is not a completely solved solution. And so, uh, you know, we have in the case of uh, of software development, uh, you, yeah, you have these this global community of developers. They host their their code on GitHub and GitLab. Uh, there's people from all over the world contributing to this these code bases, and all those not many, you know, some of those users might be uh, they might have an account at OLCF or ALCF or NERSC, but a lot of the contributors do not. And so, how do we bridge in changes from everyone into these to test in these environments? Uh, there's definitely a security uh, component to figure out, um, and also the, like I mentioned, the resource constraint uh, component to figure out. And that's where, you know, if we decoupled this high fidelity um, environment from the production space, the the hope is is that the security posture or ideas change. You know, it's an open system, um, and it's put there for the for the use case of of testing. Um, and so, uh, so we're we're trying to to remedy these two these two challenges by by pulling this this fidelity environment over um, away from the production system. And so, uh, yeah. And so traditionally, you know, um, as as looked at in the other uh, one of the other diagrams, you know, you 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 know, you get pull your code in, you build it, you run tests, um, and you work with staff, uh, which can still be the case. Uh, but if we could if we could, you know, try and put in some automation into these workflows, uh, it would greatly help with efficiency. So I'll stop before I look at ECP stuff, stuff that we've done in ECP specifically. Um, has there, are there any more questions? I don't see the chat, I'm sorry, so. It's all right, so now there's one here. How do projects get resources, allocation hours to run their CI workflow on the HPC systems you mentioned? I'm sorry, can you say that again? So how do they do it? Uh, how, do, how do projects get resources to run their CI workflow on the HPC systems that you mentioned? Yeah, so so for right now, it would just be a part of your normal, you know, so the uh, how, yeah, so how the Oscar facilities work at least is, you know, you have a scientific proposal, uh, you propose what you want to achieve on the system, it goes through this resource utilization council, they evaluate the, you know, the, the need of the system based on your proposal, and then they and they grant you time on the machine. Uh, so there's no specific pipeline or request. There's no way to request. I want to. I want to use the. You know, I want my allocation to be dedicated to the CI. Um, uh, to my CI workflow, it's it's kind of you have to get a an allocate a full allocation on the machine for your scientific proposal, and then within that you would use uh, your. Um, you know, some of your time for testing, uh, depending on how ready your code is for the machine, um, which, you know, some of our long running projects may have a pretty good idea, uh, but some of the new ones, you know, certainly not, you know, if they've never, uh, if they haven't actually, uh, you know, you know, uh, built their code for the, for the specific hardware or the programming environments on these machines, uh, you know, it can certainly eat into a lot of the allocation. So uh, the short answer is there is no, um, direct way to request CI time on these machines. Um, but that's you could that's part of the the hope here is that if we had these high fidelity environments, uh, you know, we could open that up. So folks could uh, you know, you could there could be a direct pipeline for CI time, um, not just kind of scientific allocation time on the production machine, but also a separate independent um, allocation time for CI processes. Thank you, Brian. Yeah. Is there anything else in the questions in this time frame or no, not yet. No. Okay. Okay. So we'll uh so now I'd like to take a step back and look at where ECP comes in. Uh so these are the, some of the things that we've been trying to achieve within ECP to to tackle some of this. Uh and uh so I'll give a little bit of an overview. Um 
uh, of you know why why these concepts are important to ECP, um, and then uh, you know some of the tools uh, that we've actually developed in ECP to to try and help remedy this. Um, so uh, yeah, so we can you know why why is DevOps important to the Exascale Computing Project? Uh, so the ECP has been focused on delivering Exascale ecosystem applications, systems, software, hardware technologies, and architectures to these to these diverse platforms. Um, and each of these, you can kind of you can look at the specs and kind of get an idea of how how diverse and and big big they are. Um, and so and we're you know a lot of the folks are trying to get as much performance out of these machines as they possibly can. Um, and, you know, in order to test your performance, you really have to, you know, you have to have your code tested in that environment. Um, and, and so that's one of the, the core drivers of, of this. And so the, yeah, the, the key initiative uh, that we've been focusing on, uh, particularly the, the team that I work with, uh, is, you know, on streamlining the software testing and deployment. Um, and so this does, what we have done, um, does not have that high fidelity testing environment. Uh, so part of what we've, the idea of that high fidelity environment is is kind of uh, due to what we have learned. And so um, what we've learned during the, the ECP uh, project for software deployment, we've, we've kind of seen that, okay, it would be great if we could decouple the CI infrastructure from the production machine because we're running into these kind of security and resource constraints and concerns and these uh, concerns from the facility, rightfully so. And so it's, yeah, if we can break it apart and just provide this resource specifically to the CI use case, it would greatly help. And so, um, and, and ultimately, you know, we, we know that software developers targeting these facilities have difficulty bridging their development environment uh, to the systems. Um, and so our hope is to remedy that. And, we did make progress in ECP, and we'll we'll talk about that a little bit more in the next few slides. Um, but we we acknowledge that it's not, uh, you know, it's not continuous integration uh, to the level that that folks are used to um, when they just use the kind of the open cloud based uh, platforms uh, there. So we're trying to we're trying to make it more like that. Uh, our hope is to make it more like that than it currently is. Um, but we did make some progress and we'll, and we'll talk about some of that. So this is what our team looked like in ECP. Uh, we had a, well, we had two teams. There was a software integration team and then there was a continuous integration team. And you can see how we were kind of stacked in this hourglass. Um, so we, uh, you know, the continuous integration folks were focused on the, the infrastructure and tools uh, that the software integration uh, folks could use while they help the the software technology folks and um, some of and some of the packaging uh, frameworks like E4S and SPAC. Uh, and sorry if you don't know what those are. I, I don't define them here, but they're uh, they're ultimately uh, HPC um, uh, uh, packaging uh, uh, tools and, um, and 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 delivery tools. Um, and so our combined purpose here is to provide infrastructure and support uh, for integrating the software across these uh, Oscar facilities. Um, and yeah, and it's important to acknowledge that we were kind of, you know, we 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 did we are we we did we are trying to provide this common interface on top of each site uh, to make the the experience um, uh, more cohesive. And, and this is an ongoing uh, uh, work in progress. And so one of the the key tool the the tool that we've that, that ultimately came out of this is the, the Jockam RCI tool. Um, and there's a link to it here. Um, and, and the primary goal is to, to provide access to power, powerful scientific test resources managed by facility experts. Um, and when we say test resource in this case, we actually mean on the on the system itself. So there's a, you know, this this tool would get installed in the login nodes of the HPC resource. Um, it would tie into a, a site local GitLab repository. So at OLCF, we have a, a site local GitLab repository where code gets mirrored down into. Um, and then we attach this Jockam RCI uh, tool to that, which ultimately allows uh, these, these nightly pipelines to run on a machine. Um, that's what we're shooting for. And so we have this tool. It's, a, it's ultimately a custom executor, uh, GitLab executor with some enhancements. Um, 
and the enhancements uh, are outlined here. Uh, most most of it is uh, is authorization focused. Uh, so we're 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 ultimately able to run CI jobs as the actual user who triggered them. And so the the there, there has to be a user. Um, you have to have a, a a system user, and you have to have in the in the user in the repository have to match. And so I would have a user in our in our um, site local GitLab repository. I would have a user on the system. And whenever I, you know, based on how uh, we can figure the jobs, the job would execute as me on the, on the system. So, you know, part of the assurance levels of these systems is we have to know who's doing what. Um, and that's the reasoning behind a lot of these enhancements. Uh, the other enhancement is it, it links to the actual uh, uh, resource manager. So Slurm, LSF, uh, you can actually, there's, a, there's variables that allow you to call uh, Slurm commands or LSF commands, so you can can submit a job um, to, uh, to the to the scheduler to actually run as a part of your CI pipeline. Um, so in a lot of cases, folks will build on the on the login node, and then they will do some some testing, um, uh, maybe a couple node you know two node tests or three node tests um, against the machine by submitting it to the uh, to the resource manager. Mm -hmm. And here is what, what we're working towards. Uh, so this is kind of a high level uh, outline of the workflow for the for testing and deployment. Um, so on the left, we've kind of seen a version of this already, but developers utilize uh, kind of the platform of their choice, whether it's GitLab or GitHub. There's other ones out there too. Um, you know, they, they contribute code. They, um, you, you write kind of these pipelines and these CI tests and these rules based on you know the, the things you want to happen when a merge request is sent and when a when a build is ran, when tests are ran, what kind of tests. Um, and so you know really we're trying to balance you know the, the thing that uh, uh, software developers need to kind of understand is like where where do the tests make sense? Um, and and then the so those are, that's kind of the first two steps here. Um, within ECP, the third step, we also have this uh, this E4S, uh, which is the extreme scale scientific software stack. So it's a curated list of uh, packages and uh, the EC, what it really, it really provides a lot of standards um, for the uh, software packaging. And so there's an onboarding phase to create a SPAC recipe. Um, then, then they also are the vehicle uh, that, that gets shipped uh, or that ships software to each of these sites. They uh, plug into the, the Jacamar CI tool on each of the systems directly, and they're able to kind of run these these builds and tests of the of the packages included in, in their list um, against the system. Um, and then ultimately, you get these facility deployments of uh, of a suite of software packages. Um, and there's a dashboard out there, uh, e4s.io, that shows the state of of, of each of these. Uh, E4S releases on the system, um, but this is how uh, this is what we're working towards in order to tie it all together to create uh, to create a workflow. But again, it 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 doesn't. Uh, we're not able to do CI to the full capability that I think a lot of folks want. Um, it it helps because you're able you you can set up an automated nightly pipeline, um, but we're not able to. You know, we're not able to react to every merge request uh, and run it in the facility environment. It has to be, it's kind of decoupled from the normal flow of things and it, and it happens non-continually, honestly. It, so it, it's not it's not really truly CI on the on the right side. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's a nightly thing or, uh, or less uh, is, is, is the best we, we can do or work towards at the moment. So, but we, we've, you know, based on some feedback, we want to work towards more a more true CI capability um, at these sites, and uh, I think we we have to decouple the CI infrastructure from the actual system in order to do that. So yeah, why would high fidelity infrastructure help? Uh, I touched on that already a little bit, um, but having these open test infrastructure decoupled from the production system is is really what we're talking about. Um, and then we can kind of we can start to explore truly continuous integration against the environment um, instead of what it's been uh, uh, so far. And so, uh, yeah, to me, you know, you know, working towards that high fidelity uh, environment is the first step. 
and in, in working towards more true uh, CI and, and DevOps, uh, you know, CI and CD um, within these for these uh, um, developers targeting these systems. Okay, so uh, the next I'm going to go over various CI scenarios, uh, not necessarily just for the, the the Oscar facilities, but a little bit more generally. Um, and there's just a few slides for that. Um, but before I go on, were there any other questions on any of the previous section? Yes, Ryan, um, there's a question here. What, what does a separate HPC system for CI processes look like? Why is this better or more feasible than working on the production system? Perhaps with a dedicated is Laramie queues. Yeah, so you could do it. There's multiple ways to approach it. So I uh, I kind of extract abstracted the uh, the actual implementation of it. You you could it could potentially be done with queues. Uh, in that case, you're still you're still in if it's just separation by queues. You're still in the production environment, um, and so you're still going to be limited by that that enclave that you're in. Um, so for us at OLCF, you know we have uh, we run Frontier. And it's in the moderate production enclave. And since it's in that enclave, anything we do in that space is going to be limited. Um, even if there's a dedicated queue to CI, the workflows we can enable are limited by the security controls in that enclave. And so if we were actually able to take it out of that moderate production enclave and put it into the open enclave, then we're, you know, the security constraints change and we can uh, you know, we can work towards opening up more true CI. In that space, so that might that's going to be different uh, at each at each facility, um, I would imagine. Um, but they the the protections around uh, the production system, whether it's a separate queue or not, um, are going to be the same. So you know, having an, a dedicated queue there for CI is certainly a, a great step in the right in the direction. I think because um, then you could allocate time, you know, differently to each of those uh, to the normal batch queues and then kind of the testing queue. Um, I mean, that's certainly a great step and, and not a bad idea. Um, but I, I think really getting into, you know, tr getting to where we want to do full CI, I think is going to kind of require this separation. Um, and so, yeah. Um, but it, and it, it, you could even start thinking about, uh, you know, if you just have, uh, I, so we, I guess I'll go ahead and say we've we've uh, we've been kind of speculating the idea of being able to do this uh, inside of like a Kubernetes platform as well. So say you had uh, a, a handful of nodes um, uh, that that mimic that that that's the same hardware as the target system. You 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 take that hardware, you plug it into the Kubernetes cluster. Um, and then you kind of use cloud native CI tools here. Um, and then you, you can actually probably do more robust things with that. Um, so the tool we developed out of ECP, Jockmar CI, it, it, it only works with GitLab, for instance. So it requires a, uh, a site local GitLab repository specifically. Uh, then you can mirror your code in from your you know, GitHub or wherever else into that. Um, and then Jockmar ties to that site local GitLab one. But if we had these cloud native tools, we could, we could probably, we could, and you know, we've uh, kind of, we have a basic, proof of concept of how to tie in uh, like a technology like Tekton. Um, I don't know if folks are familiar with that, but it's a cloud native CI CD tool. And so you could take Tekton and, and create these workflows with GitHub and GitLab uh, directly with the code bases out in the public, uh, not requiring that, um, that uh, site local mirror. And so, but I don't know. So yeah, Kubernetes, you know, a lot of these facilities have a, a Kubernetes cluster sitting next to the machine and I really like the idea of putting these uh, these extra services there um, as much as we can. So. Since you mentioned GitLab, th th that's the next question here. Is Jackamar capability available in GitLab Community Edition? If it's separate from GitLab, with a pull, uh, will a pull request be opened to propose Jackamar integration into GitLab? Yeah, so it's fully compatible with GitLab. I think it. I don't. Uh, I'd have to talk with. Our main, uh, I don't know if he, I don't want, I don't know if he's here, but Paul Bryant could answer that question uh, better than I could. Um, but I can, I can certainly uh, get an answer. If we can write that down, I can get an answer. I don't think it depends on the edition at all. Uh, 
but we we work closely with GitLab, um, and we uh, you know we ought, we constantly develop against changes that are that are happening at the at upstream GitLab. But it's uh, yeah, it's compatible with um, with those. One participant just made a comment here that works for him in the C edition in the chat. Okay. So, so uh, uh, just another question here. I think we have a little time here. Is, uh, this, that's from Alfred Tank. Is uh, CI currently being deployed in ECP projects? Yeah, so if you're an ECP project, um, we it is not ready on Perlmutter yet. Uh, it is. It will be ready in Aurora. We have it for uh, um, Crusher at OLCF, which is the same environment as Frontier. Um, and so, yeah, if you if you are if you have an ECB project and uh, you're looking to uh, to do this, you can you can reach out to us and we can you know onboard you um, into the system that you're targeting. Um, what what about Sunspot there at uh, Argon? Sunspot has last I so we have I'll have to follow up with the site coordinator who uh, who works at ALCF um, and get a, a more up to date status on that one. But okay, keep going. Okay. Is that all the is that all the questions for this case? Uh, yes. Okay. If there's any questions about uh, trying to apply this at a specific facility, I'm happy to follow up with folks uh, about the state at those. It's been a work in progress to call across each site, especially with the new systems coming online and all the changes happening. So, uh, but happy to talk with folks. Okay, so I'm going to take a step back and look at these kind of uh, the the high level picture of these common CI scenarios. Um, so on the left, you kind of have is kind of the generic version of this, uh, the non-HPC version. I guess I'll go ahead and say, uh, where you're you're totally, um, you know, kind of you're 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 good with the cloud-based CI systems uh, provided to you by these platforms as a service, GitHub, GitLab, whatever your tool of choice is. Uh, you're you're okay with the containers, or the VMs, and the things that it gives you behind it. Uh, there is still a cost to those; they're not free, but um, but you. You, those are fully in your control. You control the configuration of them and you, you, you do what you can. Um, as you move to the right, uh, so the Oscar model is the one in the, in the middle. Uh, this is what you know, ECP and the Oscar facilities, this is what we have to do. We have this site local mirror then we attach that site local mirror to the facility system uh, via that Jockam RCI tool. Um, and then on the right is, uh, is more along the lines of what like NNSA labs would do. So Sandia, um, so the tri labs, uh, so what they would have, and, and maybe some other folks, uh, you know, where you're, you know, you're, all your code development is happening in house. Uh, so you have your own proprietary code, you have your own system, your HPC system, and, uh, you know, you're able to have, you know, all your CI workflows are, are inside your institution. So everything from the repository to the, to the uh, system you're targeting, it's all within your in your institution, um, and so that's kind of the those are the three models that uh, that that are out there that that we have seen a lot of. Um, but the two on the right are more HPC centric. Uh, you know, you're either you have a you have a system that's in your right underneath you, your repository is right next to it, and all the contributors. You know, you're all colleague staff at the same institution and you're working on the same code base um so that that's that right hand one and then in the middle like what we have for oscar and ecp is we have these you know the software is being contributed to by people all over the world um but we're trying to figure out how to how to take all those uh, uh all those code changes and test them on a on a on a system that is um that is that is that is provided by a facility an institution to the to the world And so, yeah, we'll dive into uh, just a little bit more metadata about these these three scenarios. Uh, as I mentioned, scenario A, you know, everything is in total control by the code owners, um, and it's all on public um, general environments. Um, scenario B, uh, the infrastructure for the you know the code base is split from the target system, um, and so the you know your your you know, the boundary, the institutional and security boundary there is really important and kind of the, uh, it's what sets the bar as to, into what you're allowed to automate and how you're allowed to automate it. Um, and so that's where the, the troubles come in when, you know, when we're trying to do CI directly on these production systems, 
is that you know that boundary line really starts to show because uh, you're limited on how much you can automate and how often you can test uh, changes and um, and things like that. And then on the right, when everything's in the boundary, uh, it's you know you're not you're not bound you're not you're not hitting that uh, that line. You know you're already inside and you can kind of you know you're just at the it's just an agreement between you and the the system admins. Um, and so the institution owns everything at that at that point. And so Jacamar really fits these uh, these two scenarios on the right, uh, as mentioned before. So it it extends the security model and user controls of a facility managed GitLab server uh, to the CI/CD pipeline. So that's that site local mirror uh, instance. Uh, it's ideal for multi-tenant HPC systems. Uh, so you can have it installed on the login node, um, make it available to projects in your, your site's GitLab repository, and then allow users to use uh, you know, the, the, the HPC system for builds and tests in their CI workflow. In the future, there might be other uh, options that exist or technologies that help us say if we did. You know, if the if the Kubernetes idea turned out to be a good one, you know, we were able to work towards that, and you know, uh, maybe Jacamar is still applied in certain scenarios, uh, but maybe we use these cloud native tools in other scenarios. So there's various models and ways this could work out in the future, uh, just depending on what we do with the infrastructure and how we how it can be provided. And so why is post TC important? Uh, I mean, ultimately about you know carrying forward a legacy. Um, and so keeping this momentum um, before before ECP, I, you know, I I hadn't really heard CI be talked about um, or even thought about CI services at facilities like this, uh, you know, for the user base. Um, I think ECP really kind of brought that idea into the light more. I'm sure it was discussed and and kind of thought about uh, by folks or wished on by by developers and things, um, but it was never, you know, no, it was never really a uh, a priority um, out, you know, before ECP, um, and so now, you know, ECP really prioritized these ideas, and uh, we we made progress. Uh, you know, we we were able to put time into this Jacamar tool and kind of integrate workflows directly on the HPC systems, which is a step in the right direction. And so we just kind of need to learn uh, what the gaps are still, and try and and try and keep keep that momentum. Um, and so, and then, and then further, you know, it's ECP's ability to to bring the facilities together uh, around new ideas, developments, and achievements. And so, the fact that we could, you know, that we had operational staff from each site coming together and agreeing that these were good ideas, and yeah, we're going to work towards implementing them, and you know, the security folks from each place coming together and and figuring out how to how to make uh, help us make these things happen and. And that's continually happening today. Uh, it's, uh, you know, as the systems change and the requirements change, uh, you know, we're having to kind of adapt, but, uh, but we have points of contact and we have, uh, you know, it's this nice layer across all the systems uh, ECP is. And so um, I really, I, I really like to highlight that. I think it's important. It's going to be important for the sustainability efforts. It's going to be important for the IRI efforts. It's going to be important. You know, that same mentality is going to be important for for future things. Um, and then further the, you know, as mentioned earlier, the emphasis on research software engineering and, and putting time into these processes that make software uh, uh, more sustainable, uh, reproducible science, uh, reproducible software, uh, correctness. And, you know, if we can, you know, making testing easier and more of a first-class service uh, at these sites, uh, Will just benefit, um, you know, the future of, of scientific application development and scientific output and everything. So, and then yeah, just to 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 follow up on that, you know, what we're talking about fits, in my opinion, it fits this IRI, uh, you know, these practice areas, right? So if you if you read some of the text here, um, you know, I, DevOps and continuous integration are kind of, they're about that, right? There there's other things out services out that fit this too. Obviously, it's supposed to be a wide kind of net. Um, but I, I think CI in this space makes sense. So, you know, if, if continuous integration services at each facility could be be thought of in this IRI context, uh, it, it might help with the momentum um, and keeping this going. So, so in summary, um, 
OSCAR facilities provide unique and powerful systems, uh, and they're, and they're going to require robust integration mechanisms. And we've scratched the surface with an ECP, and we, we know it's important. Um, and it's just how do we, you know, we can always make things better, and we can always and try and provide these new services. And I think this, the CI component is, a, is, a, is, a, uh, is something worth highlighting and, and bringing attention to. Um, and then, uh, yeah, IRI and software sustainability initiatives are on the horizon. Um, and, and CI capabilities will be important for both of those. Um, and so, yeah, and, and working towards this fully continuous integration service on these Unix systems, uh, you know, we ultimately need the facilities to kind of prioritize these ideas and, uh, you know, linking it to IRI may, may help us. But, um, but again, you know, these tools and ideas are not only for the Oscar systems. I know I was pretty Oscar system centric here, but they are applicable in other HPC facilities and they are useful. Um, and so if we, uh, if anyone has a, you know, a system that, that they want to enable CI services on, um, and it's a multi-tenant HPC system, um, there's tools that can certainly help you, uh, and, and start by looking at that Jockamar CI tool, uh, for sure. And we're, and we're happy to, you know, we plan to keep that tool going post ECP, um, and we're happy to, to work with folks on, on, on things, so. And here's just some links uh, that that I thought would be useful for folks. So there's the the continuous integration documentation there. It kind of goes into the details, the administration and the setup of the Jockamar CI tool. Uh, obviously, there's a better scientific software site, which is fantastic. Uh, there's an IRI presentation uh, from Ben Brown, the Oscar facilities director, to give you a better idea of the IRI stuff. Uh, GitLab and GitHub docs, their general docs are wonderful. Um, there's a research software engineering paper, which I found really a uh, great read. And then uh, this idea of research ops, which is highlighted in this other paper. And those are folks from IBM. Um, and then software sustainability seedling projects. There's a link in a HPC Wire article about those. Uh, so if you're interested, you can kind of use that as a, a springboard to, to read more about. But I think that's all I had. Uh, I, think that, I think that's my last slide. Okay, thank you, um, um, Ryan. So uh, let's see here, I have questions. Howard, uh, you had your hand raised for a while. Would you like to ask directly, please? I'm sure. Uh, so this is a um, great talk, um, uh, Ryan. Um, but I guess I'm one of those people who's been trying to use this GitLab CI stuff for now about three years. Um, our project is stuck in slot B or slot two where um, um, in particular, it's the OpenMPI project, which has been around many more years in the ECP. Uh, and this GitLab CI infrastructure with Yakima runners is very promising, but unless something's changed, one big issue in slot B is Atlassian does not support updating on pull requests into these public GitHub repos, uh, good or bad state from the results of testing via Yakima runners on a mirror uh, within a local facility. I can do a postmortem where once the commit has been merged into the branches of interest, um, the, um, then, the, then the mirror will get updated, then that will trigger the GitLab runners. But uh, unless something's changed, even the most expensive platinum versions of Atlassian don't support a feature where you can actually pull automatically, uh, like for instance you can with Jenkins, uh, pull request contents for an open, you know, and in Atlassian world it's merge requests, but in GitHub it's pull requests. So that would be a nice thing to get fixed, but you know, if we can't do that in this post-mortem thing is okay. Another question I had is more for anyone from uh, JLSE. Um, are we going to break free from JLSC at Argon so we can have Giacomo runners, um, for instance, Sunspot? Or um, will we get a memo about that? Because right now I double checked. I went to my JLSC GitLab instance and I only see Giacomo runners available on the JLSC uh, dev cluster. <clears throat> I don't know if there's anyone. One was not so much. A, well, I guess there was a question. Does anyone know if 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 the most recent versions of, of GitLab can be configured so their CI will actually see open pull requests on the on the repo they're mir mirroring GitHub somewhere else? Uh, 
I don't see any answer to that. So let's see uh, if for the sake of time here, Howard, uh, let's see. There's another question here. Uh, I think someone is commenting just a second here. So another question here in the past, um, Brian, people could do pipelines without CI. What is the advantage of using CI now? In the past, people could do pipelines without CI. Uh, I'm not sure I totally follow. So what do you mean? Um, is the person willing to, to speak to maybe add a little bit more context? Uh, Alfred? Could you um, unmute Alfred and... and uh... Uh, yeah, I, I'm not an expert in this, but... Um... Um, but um, Sim said when um, I was doing uh, workshops and seminars and stuff like that on pipelines, uh, nobody actually told me about CI. And so I assume that um, it's something that you can do without uh, when you're um, setting up the pipelines for your workflow. So I, yeah, maybe maybe there's a, a mixing of pipeline pipelines. I guess is maybe an overloaded term, but we're uh, specifically the the pipeline here is a uh, uh, what you define. So you build a CI. So CI is kind of a, a concept and an idea in order to automate testing of of code. Um, in, but in order to do that, technically underneath you you build what is called a CI pipeline. Um, and so that's those are just kind of the rules and the stages you set up for. So when a merge request comes in, you know you have these rules and these stages defined in your pipeline for what happens when when that comes inside and runs. Uh, so what tests run? Um, but there's definitely pipelines for like workflow, like non uh, CI workflows too. Um, but here we're we're specifically talking about um, pipelines within the C continuous integration context. Maybe okay. I don't know. All right, I, I get it now. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Ryan, um, okay, so let me see here. Slaven, would you like to ask your question? Yeah, sure, very quickly. First of all, uh, Ryan, thank you for all the help that you provided to our ECP project. Uh, it's much appreciated. Uh, uh, I don't know if you had been in contact with PNNL folks from their research computing division uh, because they did uh, most of the uh, continuous integration support for our exascale computing project, and they had some very crafty solutions. Uh, so maybe sharing experiences with them uh, would be helpful. And I also know for a fact that Idaho National Lab uh, has developed their own internal uh, CI uh, uh, testing, CI continuous integration, continuous development testing tools. And uh, most of them are Python based, if I am not mistaken, and under open source licenses. So that might be another resource that you guys could uh, use. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's thank you for sharing that. That's a great idea. I think. I mean, the more we definitely can't be and aren't the only folks thinking about the these services on on these systems. And you know, there's other labs out there, you know, that that have unique systems and environments and and things as well. I don't know how. Uh, unique the Oscar situation is compared to these other situations, uh, uh, but our uh, I'm sure we share some common general issues where you know you have these really big public repositories with uh, global contributors, and then you have a system that is you know provided with this boundary, right? Um, and so it, that boundary is really where it becomes difficult. So I don't know if you know Idaho and then would fit into this you know scenario C more. In that scenario C, it kind of becomes a little bit more. It's a little easier to provide things to the folks targeting that system, but um, so it, yeah, but but either way, there's definitely things we can learn and talk about. I'm sure. So what we did with the next SGD project was A, B, and C uh, here. So all, uh, all of yeah. the above. And, yeah. Uh, I, I think it would be a good idea to have a perhaps a, a more technical meeting and share the experiences and see what has worked in the past and what hasn't. Uh, Absolutely. Because, yeah. We tried, uh, many of us tried uh, locally uh, to address uh, the lack of uh, uh, ECP uh, wide uh, CI yeah. resources. And we all came up with some solutions that were uh, sometimes patchwork solutions, sometimes a little bit better, but it would be good to pull resources together. Absolutely. Right. And, and you guys are, uh, I often use you all as a, uh, a, a highlightable project who has is, who is adopted CI. So, um, yeah. So, Ryan, so I see uh, questions here in the chat, but I think we'll follow up with folks um, 
you, you know, and uh, yeah. later, uh, just take another a final question here for the sake of time. What do you think about the possibility of having a CI focused facility, something similar to, to what is done at the University of Oregon, and just doing the current testing at facilities, but having clear ties between the big facility systems and the CI testing? Uh, it's yeah. to be a smaller facility. Yeah, so the the uh, the Frankenstein cluster at Oregon is a is a is a cool idea. Uh, the thing that I worry about, I guess, in that scenario, is the uh, the disconnect of state. And so, you know, is the environment, you know, so the the you know, I guess if you have the hardware, that's a step in the right direction. But then there's also the, the kind of the programming environments and uh, you know the system level software. So keeping that in tune with so if they have a if they have a a small frontier like cluster in their Frankenstein system, you know, is the system software is everything in line, right? Is the, does it match? Do the environments match? And can you can you fully trust what you're testing here to actually be reproducible here if they don't if they don't match? And so we kind of ran into that uh, actually locally because we have a, an open system called Ascent, which match which is a small sister cluster to a uh, summit. And that's where we originally started doing CI, but they're in two different enclave. And this this will happen, uh, you know. So in the in the case that we, that's kind of a high, that's actually a kind of an example of a high fidelity environment because it's a small environment in the open space that matches the uh, the larger production system. But the issue we run into and we that we would have to acknowledge and uh, try and remedy is that they become out of sync, and so the system software on each and. Uh, you know, the compilers and the versions of things that are available in one system don't match the other. And, and so you run into all sorts of issues when that, when that starts to happen. Um, so that's, it's a step in the right direction because you're, you have that, that hardware available more open, um, but the software environment becomes the next level of concern. Um, and that's where maybe, you know, like uh, containers from vendors, like, so the, the, if the Cray container was, uh, able to be kind of shipped around to these environments, then, you know, then the environment becomes more portable and uh, you can apply it to these testing infrastructures. So um, that that's something we can, you know, that maybe Cray's looking into, so. Okay, thank you folks for um, all the participants for joining us today. Thank you very much, Ryan. So there are still, I think, uh, some questions here that will I'll ask you to take a look later. Okay. Yeah, and I have my email here too, so I'm happy to talk with folks over email. Or yeah, so I have the I have the chat here and all that. So we'll follow up with some folks here that were more specific questions. Um, thank you all.